This is KGW News at Sunrise. Ten seconds later, you hear people screaming, bodies down, bodies down, and everyone starts scattering. That's reaction following a shooting that happened during a 4th of July parade in Chicago yesterday. And then hours later, two officers were shot during an Independence Day celebration in Philadelphia. We'll have the latest from both cities coming up here in just a minute. Also this morning, we'll hear from the leader of a rescue team that helped save a climber this weekend on Mount Hood, a climber who fell nearly 700 feet. That leader of the rescue team will explain how other climbers can avoid winding up in a similar situation. Then later this half hour, we're gonna hear how inflation is impacting the cost of everyday pet products. Dog and cat owners already know this story all too well. We'll have more on this coming up at 5.15. But first this morning, take a look. If you went to bed early last night, you may have missed some of the sights and sounds happening all around town last night in celebration of the 4th of July. These are fireworks from downtown Portland. They had uh, fireworks at the Waterfront Blues Festival at Oaks Park, uh, also at the St. Paul Rodeo after the hops game in Hillsborough. So fireworks <laughs> all over the place last night, Rod, as you and I were trying to go to sleep yes. so we could get up this morning to do the Sunrise Show. Lots of uh, booming sounding fireworks in Clark County last night, at least up until 10.50. It's the last time I remember looking at the alarm clock. And then Rod finally said, I can't do it anymore. Gotta go to sleep. I need three more pillows put over my head. All right, here we go. We actually have some rain on the radar this morning. Uh, you know, for days now, we've been telling you about an upper level low. Well, there could be a shower, but we hadn't seen anything. In fact, you know, yesterday we opened up a lot of sunshine on July 4th. 78 was the high, but here we are this morning, finally getting some rain moving uh, northward, exiting Eugene, Salem starting to get some rain. There's more over on the east side of I-5. There's Kaiser, Mount Angel, Silverton, Woodburn, perhaps starting to see a little bit of rain out in Sheridan as well. Uh, some breaks in the cloud cover downtown Portland where we are dry right now, but showers are a possibility as that rain continues to push up to the north. Right now, 62, mostly cloudy during the day, 68 at noon. We keep the chance that you will see a few showers around the area, 76 degrees at 5 p.m. Drew? All right, we'll have more from Rod here in just a minute, but first we want to get to our top story this morning. Two shootings at 4th of July events in two of our country's biggest cities. We're going to start this morning in Philadelphia where two police officers were shot during an Independence Day celebration last night. Both officers were taken to the hospital where they were treated for their injuries and then released. At this point, it's still too early to tell. We don't know if this was a ricochet from celebratory gunfire. We don't know if this was intentional. Uh, we don't know if this was someone taking a shot intentionally at these officers from uh, long range. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I, we're, we're all just extremely grateful that this wasn't worse than what it was. I'm concerned every single day. There's not an event or a day where I don't lay on my back at night, look at the ceiling and wonder, worry about stuff. So everything we have in the city uh, at, over the last seven years, I worry about. I don't enjoy Fourth of July. I don't enjoy the, the, the Democratic National Convention. I didn't enjoy the, the um, um, uh, NFL draft. I'm waiting for something bad to happen all the time. So it's, I'll be happy when I'm not here, when I'm not mayor and I can enjoy some stuff. That's Philadelphia's mayor reacting to last night's shooting. We also know that Philadelphia police are still looking for a suspect this morning. Earlier in the day, there was a mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in North Chicago, where at least six people are now dead and 38 more are injured. The people who were shot range in age from 8 to 85. The suspect opened fire from a rooftop and then escaped from the roof, leaving the rifle behind. ATF agents were able to trace the rifle serial number. At a mass shooting, the killer does not usually leave the gun. All that's found are shell casings and projectiles that are left at the scene. Here we have the rifle that will yield evidence of DNA. That person of interest is now in custody. This is video right here of what is believed to be the arrest of the suspect. This was the third major mass shooting in the United States since May. There have now been more than 300 mass shootings in the U.S. altogether this year, approaching a record number, and we're still here in the first week of July. NBC's Bree Jackson brings us more. A horrific scene in Highland Park, Illinois. People scrambling for safety after a gunman atop a building opened fire on crowds gathering for a 4th of July parade, killing at least six people and injuring dozens more. Our community was terrorized by an act of violence that has shaken us to our core. Someone uh, 
destroyed countless lives. Um, community was shattered. A lot of people are grieving, and it will be a long time for this uh, this community to heal and recover. President Biden again taking on the role of consoler in chief on a day meant to celebrate America's independence. A slight moment of silence for all those families. This latest mass shooting comes less than two weeks after President Biden signed into law historic new gun legislation following high profile shootings in Uvalde and Buffalo. The bipartisan package included expanded background checks for gun buyers 18 to 21. Police say the person of interest in this latest shooting is 22. But we got a lot more work to do. We got to get this under control. We got to get this under control. The president vowing to keep fighting the epidemic of gun violence in the country. In Washington, Bree Jackson for NBC News. This morning on the Today Show, we're hearing from two doctors who were at that parade in Chicago with their families and wound up becoming the first responders on the scene. I knew the kids were, were safe at that point, and I just said to my dad, I'm going to go back and go back and help. What did you see? It was... Uh, quite a horrific scene. There was a gentleman who was obviously deceased. Um, there was another older gentleman who had a gunshot to his abdomen. I was starting IV. That's when I looked up and I saw David. Uh, so David and I started the IV on him. I went across the street. There were a couple of younger guys with uh, gunshots to their leg. We, we had tourniquets on them. Went across the street. There was a woman uh, who had a gunshot to her, uh, to her chest. Uh, they were mask ventilating her. The Today Show will be live from the Highland Park area of Chicago later this morning with full coverage of the shooting. That's coming up here at 7 o'clock right after sunrise. Now let's get you caught up on a couple of local headlines this morning. We start with an Oregon City man who's in custody accused of kidnapping a Canadian teenager. Police arrested Noah Medrano on July 2nd after being alerted by the FBI of his activity here in the U.S. The 13-year-old girl had been missing for about a week. She is safe this morning. Her parents have been notified, and authorities are now working to return her to her family. Medrano, meanwhile, faces charges of child luring. He's expected to appear in a Clackamas County courtroom this afternoon. And fireworks are likely to blame for a house fire yesterday morning in Roseburg. The couple who lives in this house managed to escape they weren't hurt, but their garage was torched. You can see some of the video right there. Fire say, or firefighters that is, say fireworks that were improperly extinguished sparked that fire. We also want to tell you about another rescue on Mount Hood that happened over the weekend. On Saturday, a 43-year-old climber lost his ice axe near the old chute and wound up falling nearly 700 feet. A National Guard helicopter airlifted him to a Portland area hospital. John Goodwin spoke with Portland Mountain Rescue about this rescue mission. There's always risk involved in climbing Mount Hood. It's, you know, it's a technical mountain. Eric Brahms is a rescue leader with Portland Mountain Rescue. You know, it's been quite busy this year. He's been with PMR for 20 years, so he knows the landscape when it comes to Mount Hood. And it's always important to, you know, know the route, know the conditions and have a have a backup plan. Those conditions change fast, and even for the most experienced mountaineers, controlling what you can isn't always enough. A 43-year-old climber learned that this weekend. Around 6.30 Saturday morning, he lost his ice axe and fell almost 700 feet from the summit ridge at an area called the Old Chute, down to the rocks above the Hot Rocks Fumarole, a volcanic vent spewing toxic gas. You know, a slide at one of those spots usually results in some serious injuries because once you slide, and unless you self-arrest within just a fraction of a second, you're probably going to, you know, go for a ride. Brahms led the rescue mission on Saturday. The climber was stabilized and airlifted by the National Guard. No matter what, you should be prepared on Mount Hood, and in the event of an emergency, a call doesn't mean immediate rescue. It's not like, you know, you call up and the helicopter's going to come and just give you a ride to the hospital. You may have to wait, you know, hours. It was a, a big team effort, you know, by PMR, the Crag Rats, uh, AMR, and uh, the National Guard and the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department. Mount Hood is dangerous to climb year round because of the steep icy conditions. This was the second accident within the same area in just over a week. The climb is half over once you get to the summit. You know, you've got to get down safely. The climber from Happy Valley went to the hospital and is recovering. 
Brahms is thankful for a best case scenario. We were able to get him off the mountain to the hospital. And yes, he did not go into the funeral because that would have added another, you know, layer of uh, you know, complexity to the uh, mission. And it, the outcome may not have been as good. John Goodwin, KGW News. All right, before we get to Rod Hill, a quick look outside this morning. Sun breaks on this uh, early Tuesday morning, the morning after the 4th of July. Now, yesterday, Rod, I felt like was pretty perfect. Yes. As far as uh, 4th of July holidays are concerned, yeah. weather-wise, we did a little yeah. berry picking out in Canby yesterday. Yeah, what type yes. of berries? Uh, we got mostly raspberries. Yeah. There were a few strawberries. Rough year for strawberries because of all that rain we had yeah. in May and June. But there were a few strawberries left, uh, but mainly raspberries, Rod. Excellent. Lots of them. I'm very happy for you. We spent dozens of dollars, <laughs> but uh, great operation. I'll, I'll give him a quick shout out. South uh, in, in Canby, uh, Barlow Berry Farms, okay. terrific operation out yeah. there. So anyway, there's the quick plug for them. Familiar with them. Uh, love our berries. We have a day that could actually produce some rain showers. In fact, some of you getting wet right now. You can see the rain uh, moving south to north up the valley. This is the same weather setup going all the way back to last Friday that's had a daily shower chance of some degree, but so far nothing, right? Uh, but finally, here's Woodburn starting to get a little bit of rain. Turner, Salem's had a little bit. Sheridan out in the coast range has had a little bit as well. Futurecast shows the shower chance ongoing at least in the mid afternoon. So and here's the rain chance also alive at the coast today. 830 this morning. Here we are at noon. Some showers in Portland, the coast up around Astoria. And then keep in mind, there's a chance of a thunderstorm. See the yellow and boom. There it goes. Possible thunderstorm activity along the Cascades and maybe over into central Oregon. Today's probably dry out across eastern Oregon, and that's where the rain's actually been in the last handful of days, or at least a threat of it. Here we are tonight at 7 o'clock. Everything's kind of starting to fizzle out, but we'll have another shower chance to watch tomorrow. Clouds over downtown. We saw some breaks from the Wells Fargo uh, camera in the sky. 62 is the current number. We have 51 in Astoria, 59 in Bend. Cool spot this morning, Baker City at 42. And uh, here come the uh, temperatures today. Probably low to mid 70s, depends on how much sun we get and when you would have a shower. But we think today is mostly cloudy overall. I don't think we're going to open up the sun that we had on July 4th. And again, the ongoing threat that you'll see some showers. Rain totals should average less than five one hundredths of an inch. And again, no guarantee you're going to see something. But we know we have some. We do have showers in the area this morning. Battleground 75. I'm also not sure if the showers migrate all the way north up into Cowlitz County, but we'll keep an eye. 73 for you folks in Longview. Here's the seven day shower chance. A lot of clouds around tomorrow, 76 today and tomorrow. Then we start to warm up Thursday afternoon with sunshine developing 79, 80 or better on Friday. Could be close to 90 on Sunday and then Monday of next week could be day one of perhaps three where we get back up into the 90s for our next low mini heat wave. And that's your forecast. Rod, I got the uh, short end of the straw here. You get Ooh. to talk about the weather. I have to talk about inflation. <laughs> yeah, uh, inflation, as many of us know, at a 40 year high at this point, and it's really impacting just about every aspect of our lives, including pet expenses. So here's the question this morning, just how much extra are we spending on our pets? We'll explore that question coming up next. But before we go to break, a quick reminder that the KGW School Supply Drive is coming soon. It kicks off next month in August, but right now is the opportunity for you to get involved by signing up to be a collection site. Whether you have an organization or a local business, any place, anywhere that could serve as a collection site, we want to hear from you. You can sign up right now by going to this website. It's kgw.com slash school.